Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I guess we can, you can hear me, right? You can hear me. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> here's our theme today. Shoe, baseball, forgiveness, and love. Now you're probably wondering, wait, how do they connect? Well, here we go. So a long time ago when I was in high school, I went down to the boys' locker room, and I found a shoe. And I took the shoe, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to throw it against that wall right there. So I wound up, I threw the shoe. Problem was, at the top of the wall were windows. <laughs> and the shoe, oops, went a little too high and smash, broke the window. Of course, I knew I was wrong. I had made a bad choice. So what happened next? Well, Mr. Baker sent me to the principal's office, of course. So I walked into the principal's office to meet with Mr. Jackson. He was the principal at the time. It's very interesting. Mr. Jackson had a heart and had forgiveness in his heart. And he said to me, Timmy, you made a bad choice swinging that shoe around and breaking the window. You have to pay for the window. And I thought to myself, that was a fair consequence, right? I delivered the Maryland Gazette. Some of you may be familiar with that. So I had to take my hard-earned money and pay for the window. Yeah, episode number one. Number two, the baseball. I love throwing a baseball against my house in practice. I would go out there sometimes and I would reenact the 1969 World Series between the Baltimore Orioles and the New York Mets. So one day I'm out there and an erring throw went right through another window. <laughs> Something with me and windows and busted the window. Out came my father and oh boy, he was hot, angry, but also forgiving. He said to me, first of all, give me the baseball, give me your glove. You're not going to be playing baseball anytime soon. And you're going to pay for the window again with my Maryland Gazette money. We have a heavenly father who also corrects us, right? Who sets us on the right path because he wants us to be the best we can be. He reminds us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All. Notice that word all. I, I think that's the most important word, boys and girls, in that verse, because it doesn't say some people or a few people or a couple people. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we have to acknowledge that we mess up, like throwing a shoe through a window, throwing a baseball through a window. Maybe we don't listen to mommy and daddy all the time. Maybe we don't listen to our wife all the time. Yeah. God gives us beautiful people in our lives to always show us the way. And I'm reminded that, you know, I always listen to Miss Pearl because she's always right. <laughs> yeah. So God provides these people in our lives to help shape us, mold us, to help us to stay focused on that narrow door because that's the key to heaven. And here's the love part. Oh, my goodness, even though we mess up, boys and girls, even though we make mistakes, even though we sin, God has a plan. He loves us. He sent his son to die for us to wash away all those sins. So that even though we mess up and we're corrected, God sets us back on the path of righteousness so that we can live out his glory and share that with other people. So the next time you're corrected by your parents, don't get upset. They're trying to make you better people, just as God is trying to make us better Christians each and every day. To that we say amen. And the disciplined people of God always say amen. amen. And what a great song to follow that up. Have no fear, little flock. That's our next song. Book page 